welcome to today's webinar, Roadmap and Strategy Update for SDL TMS and SDL Managed Translation. My name's Kate and I'll be your host. Your speakers today are David Pooley, who's a Senior Product Manager for SDL TMS, and Ian Parnell, Product Manager for SDL Managed Translation. We expect today's webinar to last around 30 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. If you do have any questions during the presentation, then, can, then please put them in the Q&A um, window and we'll look to answer them at the end of the webinar. I'm now going to pass you over to Ian to begin the presentation. Thank you, Kate, and thank you for everybody that's joined for today's webinar. Uh, so let me just quickly walk you through the agenda for today's uh, webinar. So I'm going to start by providing you with um, a summary, a recap of some of the recent uh, updates and releases that we've done for the SDL Managed Translation platform. Uh, we'll also look ahead at some of the upcoming uh, releases that we have over the next few months. Uh, I will then pass over to David, who will do the equivalent for SDL CMS. Again, recap on recent uh, releases and walk through some of the, the updates uh, that will be arriving imminently. Um, we're then going to, to switch tight and start talking a little around SDL Language Cloud and the transition plan that will obviously impact on some of our existing customer base. Uh, and then we'll open up finally for some Q&A uh, at the end of the session. So as, as Kate said, uh, we're aiming to, uh, to run the webinar today for around 30 minutes or so. Okay, so if we start by looking at the roadmap for SDL managed translation. So as I said, I uh, start by uh, summarizing uh, the recent updates uh, that we have shipped since the, the mid part of this year. And then I'll also give you a, a preview of the release coming later this month and then into uh, the, the early part of, of next year. So the updates that we've got planned in Q1 2020. Um, I have some uh, following slides that will go through some of these features in a little bit more detail. So I won't go through all of those um, in as much detail on, on this particular slide. I'll just call out the ones that aren't covered in subsequent slides. So if we start with the 19.6 uh, release that shipped around the, the June time this year, uh, we made some improvements to the way that we handle file uploads in SDL Managed Translation. So we implemented something that called chunked uploads, essentially. So instead of processing an upload of a file in one single transaction, we now break it down into smaller chunks. So the net result of that is a much more robust um, and stable mechanism that we use for file uploads in the system. Uh, we also introduced the ability for step deadlines to be included in the review and sign-off emails that we send from SDL Managed Translation. And uh, as a result of feedback requests that we had raised via the SDL community, we also made some improvements or some uh, introduced some additional flexibility for project creation in SDL Managed Translation. So previously, the project due date it was always set when a user first navigated to create a project to a specific number of days in the future. Um, but we found that for, for some users, for some customers, that set um, unrealistic ex expectations in some cases. So what we're now able to do when a user first navigates to the Create a Project screen, we can leave the project due date blank. So although that field is still mandatory, a user is essentially forced to specify what the project due date should be. Uh, moving on to the 19.9 release, um, and again, the first two of the features that are listed in here uh, I'll cover in subsequent slides. I won't go through those in detail now. Um, but the third item in here for 19.9, we um, introduced support for multiple review steps to be handled through SDL Managed Translation as part of the workflow for a specific, uh, specific project. So up until this point, we had a, um, a hard limitation, a hard set limitation that only allowed up to two 
review or sign up steps in a single workflow. With this enhancement, it's now possible for customers to have as many review and sign up steps in their workflow as they, as they choose to, according to their own uh, localization process. Uh, and those steps can be performed through SDL Managed Translation. Looking ahead now, so the release that we have coming up later this month, the 19.12 release, we will um, make available for the first time an in-context review capability um, to supplement our uh, connector, our, our integration that we have available for Adobe Experience Manager. And we'll also introduce additional support for project groups. Again, both of these features I'll cover in subsequent slides. And then into next year uh, for the 20.3 release, we will be looking to implement support for batch actions to be performed through the SDL Managed Translation system. So rather than the current implementation where project approval, uh, project download has to be performed for individual projects, will allow users to be able to select multiple projects and take the appropriate action against all of the, the selected projects. And then we're also looking to introduce support for something that we're referring to as project delegates. So what this will allow a user to do, so during project creation, there will be an additional field where a user can specify additional users that from that point forward can take the, the same action as though they were the project creator. So they'll assume the same permissions, they'll receive the same email, email notifications as the person who is creating the project. So there's a couple of um, scenarios where that may become relevant. So for example, you, you can think of this as creating a project on behalf of another user, um, which might become uh, interesting in some context, but also you may want to share or split responsibilities for other users. So if, if, if a colleague can get to a project to approve it earlier than you can, you may just want to say, well, I'm happy for that to happen. So you, you're delegating, if you like, or sharing responsibility for that project with another user. Okay, so if we uh, look at some of these features in a little bit more detail, and we have some uh, visuals to kind of aid the, the description of these features. So uh, we had a number of customers that uh, asked us to kind of introduce uh, slightly more flexible support for how reference files can be associated with a project. So rather than the previous implementation where reference files had to be attached during project creation, it's now possible for a, a user to go back into an existing project and upload additional reference files once the project has already been created. So again, it just uh, introduces slightly more flexibility. So rather than a user having to wait, perhaps to, to initiate the project because they're waiting for some of the, the resource or reference files to be available, they can still go ahead and create that knowing that at a later point they can come back and attach the necessary reference files to the project. We also, uh, again, as, as a result of uh, customer feedback and suggestions, I think this, this was actually the, the top voted idea that we've ever had on SDL community, at least for, for the SDL managed translation platform. We had customers asking um, if we could allow users to specify a date range when they're requesting a data export through SDL managed translation. So again, the previous behavior, um, uh, up until this point, we always included the previous 12 months of data when a user requested a data export, even if that user might only be interested in projects from the previous three months, six months, and so on. So when a user now goes to generate a data export, there are a number of preset options from the pick list, pick list that you see highlighted in here. Uh, so these correspond to the same date range date durations that we have available from the dashboard page. So previous three months, previous 12 months, and so on. But in addition, a user can enter a start date and an end date of exactly their own preference, so a custom range from within this control. OK, 
Okay, now if we look at a couple of the features that are coming up in the December release for SDL Managed Translation. Um, so first of all, project groups. So project groups is a, a concept that we've supported in SDL Managed Translation for some time, but in a very limited capacity. So where a, a project was already part of a project group, we displayed this as a field from within the SDL Managed Translation interface. We include it, it in the data export where, where that's relevant for a particular customer. But we've never allowed or exposed the ability for a user to be able to uh, create project groups within uh, SDL Managed Translation or add, remove projects from project groups within SDL Managed Translation. So that's the piece that we've been working on that will be included in this release. So as you will see in this short video, um, what we're essentially doing here is we're round tripping that process. So from the All Projects page, we can see a list of projects filtered by project group. When we create a project now, you will notice that we have an additional field in the form where a user can specify if this project should be added to a new project group that can be created in real time or to an existing project group as is the case in here. And then once the project has been created again, uh, if we navigate now back to the All Projects page and filter on projects in that particular project group, you'll see the new project that we've just created is now present as part of this filter. So it's taking that, um, that concept of a project group to the next level. Um, and what, uh, what this will, will also um, start to, to kind of allow users to do, um, if we go back to the batch actions feature that I mentioned that we'd be working on in the 20.3 release next year, in tandem, what this feature will allow us to do, or both of those features will allow a user to do, is take uh, a group of projects uh, according to project group and approve all the projects within that project group. So it's actually introducing quite a, a powerful means of uh, allowing users to take action against a related collection of projects through this project grouping mechanism. And then finally from me, um, I mentioned we're also looking to release our in-context review capability. Um, for our AEM connector. So again, uh, I have a, a screenshot in this case of how uh, that will be presented. Um, so as you can see from in here, what we're allowing a user to do is perform their review in the context of how this page actually looks in Adobe Experience Manager, see the segmentation of the file uh, through basically by uh, hovering their mouse over the, the contents of the page. And then if they want to make any changes as part of that review, that is all done in line within the, the review mode. Okay. Uh, and what we'll actually start to be, do over the course of the, the next couple of weeks, we're, we'll be talking with some of our existing customers that are already working with the AEM integration. Um, and we'll, we'll identify a couple of those customers to see if they're interested in uh, taking a look at this, this capability uh, and running that as part of a pilot program with, with, with some of our existing customers. And with that, I'll hand over to, to David to run through uh, the roadmap for SDL TMS. Thanks, Ian. Um, so this is the TMS releases that we've done most recently in the past 18 months or so. Uh, you can see our themes that run through these releases. So we have security, connectivity, uh, performance, uh, customer satisfaction, UX, and uh, something called convergence, where we have already been taking advantage of some of the new functionality that's been developed as part of SDL Language Cloud that we'll come along to talk about later. Uh, and most significantly out of here, um, I'll talk a little bit more about the enhanced vendor support that we've delivered in 12.4. Uh, the audit trails, again, is part of the security features that we've been 
concentrating on the filter updates just brings us up to date with the latest uh, and greatest filter set that we have which we share amongst all our products uh, from Studio and World Server through Language Cloud and also TMS. Uh, coming up in the first quarter next year, we'll be releasing a new SDL TMS 12.5. Uh, what we're looking at here is being able to deliver on some of the uh, community ideas and customer satisfaction issues that we have uh, that have already been raised by our existing customer base. So a couple of the top ones that have been both come through the community is being able to uh, override the QA checks on a, on a whole job rather than having to have to do that one task at a time, which can be quite uh, cumbersome. Uh, being able to import and export cost models so that you can easily edit them uh, in a spreadsheet tool such as Excel or Google Sheets or something like that, uh, and then bring those back into TMS uh, rather than having to use the web page as it is. Uh, as I said, looking at other ideas from the community side and looking to implement some of those. Uh, there are other things that we are proposing for this right now. It's not firmed up. Uh, that will be uh, concretized, to use a word uh, that other people have used before, uh, in the next uh, few weeks. So um, we may be able to provide more information on what's uh, going to definitely be in that release uh, once we've done that planning. Uh, and as always, we like to concentrate on user experience and customer satisfaction. Um, so yeah, 12.5, end of Q1 uh, in 2020. Go. So just talk a little bit about the in 12.4 and the vendor support that we delivered. Uh, so this is vendor functionality um, where SDL may be providing services alongside other translation vendors or where SDL may not be involved at all uh, in, the, in the translation or review of particular projects through TMS, uh, but there are multi-vendors there. Now previously this was all the sort of functionality available to these vendors when they logged into TMS. A lot of it was hard-coded, so uh, there were specific things that they could and couldn't do. Uh, which was unlike other areas of TMS where what you can and can't do is governed by permission. So in 12.4, we scrapped all that sort of hard-coded functionality, and now all the functionality available to the vendors is governed by permissions. There are still some exceptions to that about what you, you know, not being able to see other vendors' information, not being able to see jobs that aren't assigned to you but are assigned to other vendors, um, and basically not, you know, not being able to edit things that you really shouldn't be able to edit. Uh, we improved on some of the logic to determine whether a vendor is assigned to a task or to a job. If a vendor is the only one assigned to that particular job, then they will get to see the costing information for that, which previously wasn't possible, so that that helps with their reporting. Uh, and again, when they run reports, um, when they run the standard TMS reports, they'll get that costing information as well if they're the sole vendor for that particular job or for those jobs. Uh, organization visibility, again, that's logic that depends on whether a vendor is assigned to a job within a particular organization in TMS. Uh, and so it's, it's all now much more logical and hopefully much more functional for vendors who are using, uh, coming in and using SDL TMS. As I said, vendors will never see information belonging to another vendor, um, so there's no concerns there. Uh, I did recently publish an article on the news and blogs section on the SDL TMS community page, which outlines all these changes in a little more detail. So if anyone wants to go and have a look at that, please feel free. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, just uh, add them to the blog or let me know and I'll get back to you um, as necessary. Okay, uh, so we, now we're gonna talk a little bit about SDL Language Cloud. Uh, so SDL Language Cloud, uh, we are calling the fourth generation of translation management. We've been through one, two, and three, and now we're on to four as far as SDL is concerned. Um, we are developing Language Cloud based on our experience of having done SDL TMS, SDL World Server, Group Share, Studio, uh, and you know all the other language technologies that we've previously implemented. 
uh, and SDL Language Cloud is our new platform. Um, it, it, it goes beyond what we've already done with TMS and World Server and, and all the other tools. Uh, it's providing something that we call intelligent translation management. So if I go from left to right here about the sort of pillars of the, of the SDL Language Cloud and what we're developing here, we've got this complete content integration, so we're supporting all file types, direct integrations to over 100 different content systems, so there's no real need to be manually importing and exporting tasks there. You have that connectivity out of the box uh, and everything can be done automatically. We've got sophisticated neuro machine translation in there. So this is the first platform where we are uh, surfacing that neural machine translation over and above our ETS product uh, or our B Global product. But this is actually baked into SDL Language Cloud so that we can get the neural machine translation in there. All the user experience in Language Cloud uh, is based on the role that a particular user is fulfilling when they come in. So we have different dashboards according for whether you're a translator or a project manager or a content owner. But when you come into Language Cloud, you will see the view that you want to see, and you can tailor that view to how you want it to be. And it immediately lets you drill down into the important things that you need to be doing. As I said, intelligent translation management, so we have uh, linguistic AI in SDL Language Cloud that can analyze your content as you submit it, and that we can use that then to determine the best assets to leverage, uh, such as translation memories, terminology databases, and even machine translation engines. So if you're uploading content, we can look at that and say, oh, this is, you know, this is marketing content and therefore needs to go down this route uh, to these people, as opposed to you know, product documentation content, which needs to go down a different route. Uh, it's 100% compatible with SDL Trello Studio, so translators and reviewers already get to use the tool that they're familiar with today uh, and that allows them to do their job in the most efficient uh, manner. Okay. Um, so you can see uh, on here that we've these are some of the capabilities in Language Cloud. We've extended the capabilities that we had previously in our other translation management offerings. Uh, as I said, we've got role-based experiences, um, and all of this provided in an enterprise-ready cloud platform that is scalable and secure. The most important thing, I think, uh, really, is that SDL Language Cloud is designed for everyone. So whether you're, uh, you could be a seasoned translator, a localization project manager, or a marketer, and you're just looking for the most efficient way to get the job done, and SDL Language Cloud is the only real end-to-end -end translation management solution, uh, which is also powered by that sort of machine intelligence and human expertise. So you can get your multilingual content out uh, in, the, in as efficiently as possible. So uh, that's our uh, that's a little overview of what SDL Language Cloud is. Uh, our plan then will be ultimately to transition existing customers onto the new platform uh, in, at some point. At some point, uh, in order to do that, we have to look at what those challenges are going to be in order to do that transition. Uh, so I, I have this slide about the three C's, the complexity, the customization, and the connectivity. Complexity is just a measure of, uh, for example, how, and this is specifically targeted at uh, TMS and managed translation, uh, what we're looking at here. Uh, so complexity is a measure of how complex the setup is, how difficult it is to recreate that. So that's based on translation memories, terminology databases, how many organizations you have, vendors, you know, groups and users, and how your costing works and everything else. So all of that functionality is sort of you know, uh, going to be applicable, and we will have uh, feature parity for all that complexity in Language Cloud, and it's how we're going to take that over 
uh, from the existing system and, and into the cloud platform. Uh, customization is stuff that's achieved with functionality that's not out of the box. So in TMS land, we have uh, custom workflow steps, obviously, file types, reports, attributes, uh, some popular customizations that we have, such as modified job specs or this multi-action type executor. Uh, so, and any customizations that's been done around single sign-on as well. So there's a measure there of the customization and we need to evaluate that and take that into consideration when we're planning on the transition. And then the connectivity uh, was basically how, what integrations are present in the existing system. So we may have integration with other SDL content products such as Tridian Docs or Tridian Sites. Um, integrations with third-party content management systems integrations that we've developed, integrations that somebody else has developed, and we need to take all this into account when we're sort of trying to plan the transition. Uh, and so we have a, a sort of tentative product transition queue, if you like. Uh, so going from what we consider to be the easiest at the top to the more complex down at the bottom, any system that we currently host uh, is going to be easier for us to transition. Any system that's currently on-premise uh, is going to be much harder. Uh, we will get we will get around to that, but tentatively we're looking at doing sort of the hosted systems, single vendor, SDL, where the customer is only coming in and using SDL managed translation. Yes, we're using SDL TMS in the background there, uh, but in terms of the interface that the customer uses, uh, they're only using SDL managed translation, and we can go down. This slide, I won't go through every single option here, but you can see hopefully how that gradually for us becomes more complex uh, as we move through time. And this also allows us to, uh, we will be continually developing language cloud uh, all down that timeline. Uh, and so there may be things in here that we put further down the line because we want the time to get the feature parity with the existing product in language cloud to, to make that transition easier. Uh, so what we are planning to do uh, with the transition is to do this in waves, and this is an example. This is not set in stone. This is a uh, you know a sort of uh, a, a plan that we could, we could be implementing. So each of those categories that we talked about, the the complexity and the customization, we would score those on a scale from zero to a hundred. Um, so with a low score being a, a low complexity or a low customization, uh, and obviously going all the way up to 100. Uh, and the connectivity, we will just measure that in, as the number of integrations uh, that we have between SDL TMS or SDL Managed Translation and other products. And so we, our proposal is to do this in waves um, and based on whether it's a dedicated server, it's a shared server, whether that customer is using uh, SDL managed translation, whether they've got the managed service in place, um, how many, you know, when it comes to customization. Complexity is, is much easier to implement in Language Cloud, so the high complexities come before the high customizations, because complexity is just we've got a lot of things to re implement uh, in SDL Language Cloud, whereas customization is more about, well, we actually, we're going to have to go back and we might need to redevelop a customization. Although, having said all of this, uh, the transition to SDL Language Cloud is an opportunity to reevaluate the business requirements, and maybe there's a, there's a chance uh, as part of this transition that we can simplify some things and we don't have to re-implement everything from scratch. So, so that's a sort of example transition plan uh, for SDL Managed Translation. Um, and that's it. Uh, I think we're done. We're on the 30-minute mark, which we said we would try and achieve. Uh, please, if you want to know more about Language Cloud or TMS or SDL Managed Translation, please come and join the community. You can submit ideas, product enhancements there. You can find out about releases, uh, and you can see blog posts and everything else. So please come and join if you, if you haven't already joined. Uh, and yes, I think we can go through for some Q&A now if anybody has any. I, I've been checking as we go and I don't currently see any questions uh, raised. I'll give it a couple of minutes maybe, see if anyone who wants to raise one.
If not, uh, if there's no questions right now, then uh, if you have questions after the presentation, please get in touch. Uh, oh, I see we have a question about integrations. Um, yeah, anything that's using the – if in, integrations are already using that API and that connectivity between Mantra, then those will be – yeah, they'll be very straightforward to take those through to Language Cloud. Um, so the question was that if integrations are already using the Mantra or Language Cloud API, those should continue to work. Yes, they will continue to work. Okay, in the absence of, as I was saying, if there's any other questions, uh, please get back to us, please get in touch, we'll, we'll get back to you and we'll, we'll answer any questions uh, as necessary. But for now, Kate, if you could maybe just cover off the last Peace. Yes, no problem. Firstly, thank you, um, Ian and David, for presenting today. Um, but before we close the webinar, we just wanted to share the following and outline that, as I'm sure you're very aware, this was a product roadmap and strategy session. Today's presentation is intended to outline our general product direction and is for information purposes only and is not a commitment to deliver any features or functionality. So thank you for attending today's webinar, and we hope you found today's session useful. As we said, if you have any questions, please um, please reach out to us. Uh, we will be sharing recording um, in the next couple of days with everybody. So have a great rest of day. Thank you, everybody.